not designed to set style trends, nor did they come from the shops of commercial stylists. As a matter of fact, they were not designed to set style anywhere. Yet the good taste they reflect may well influence what's worn the world around. While they were created for only one woman, the woman who wears them, yet they may be and often are adopted individually by millions of others. For these are creations of the high art and skill of the motion picture costume designer, whose sole function is to provide appropriate dress for motion picture stars and featured players, a vital contribution to the transformation of a human personality into a specific screen character. In the one word appropriate lies the essence of the costume designer's problems and of his or her talent, skill, and knowledge. For no matter how simple a costume, it must be right. No matter how complex a cast wardrobe, it must be right. No matter how minor a clothes detail, it must be right. To the costume designer who is responsible for these and many other considerations, being right means being right on three major counts, historic, geographic, and dramatic. Historical accuracy presents no major problem, since Hollywood's costume design departments are well stocked with source material. With factual description and illustrative sketches, drawings and photographs to follow, the costume designer can easily provide us with a well-turned-out caveman, an authentic Roman crowd, properly gowned turn-of-the-century chorus girl, or any other historically authentic characters ranging all the way from before the time of the Crusades down to the present day. Other volumes, sketches, and illustrative material in the vast reference libraries of the studios make geographic accuracy also a fairly routine affair. For instance, what would be the proper apparel for an ancient Spanish printer, a chemist, or an African witch doctor? Up comes the answer, translated with faithful accuracy to the screen by the costume designer. The same for a well-turned-out Eskimo, an Argentine gaucho, a Mexican pearl diver, or any other character in any other locale dressed appropriately for the location where the action takes place, as well as for the historical period. Where the costume designer contributes most is in providing those values which make costumes right dramatically. Here the problems to be solved are often most difficult and elusive. And to create appropriate answers, the costume designer must work almost all together with intangibles, with ideas, judgment, intuition, feelings, and taste. In the mind of a designer, the creation of a gown starts with these abstract elements during the very first stages of film planning. For that is when the costume designer begins work on any given assignment, sitting in with the producer, director, art director, cameraman, and if the picture is to be in color, with the color coordinator. It is in such conferences that she begins to work out answers to those important, intangible problems which face her. In the case of our example, her thoughts and planning may well have followed a pattern like this. Let's see now. The girl is young, about 20. Her sweetheart has just left her after a quarrel. She's going out this evening with another boy, a friend of the family who means nothing to her. How would she dress? Somberly, because she's unhappy about the quarrel? Or should she be characterized differently from a dress point of view? I wonder if I shouldn't dress her in a manner to help cover up her unhappiness. Say in something white and gay and sparkly. What about material? Jersey, perhaps embroidered in sequins. In the story, she does come from a family of means, so there's no false note there. A dress like that would give her an air, too. Make her look defiant and at the same time alluring. But wait a minute. She cries just before she leaves for her date. That's a big emotional moment and deserves all the emphasis we can give it. We don't want the audience to be more interested in the gown than in the character of the scene. Better make the gown less extreme so it won't detract from the girl. Chiffon, then. Attractive, but not as flamboyant as the other dress. 
It's summertime, too, so chiffon would be appropriate. Suits her character, too. Adds to it, in fact. She does wear it well. And it will be striking in the moonlight. Good. Chiffon it is. And so the costume designer establishes the basic elements of appropriate dress for that scene. For other scenes, well, the same process again. And again after that, scene after scene, through the entire action of the film. With all the dramatic, historical, and locale requirements fixed in mind, our designer is now ready to crystallize and integrate her facts, intuition, and skill. Rough sketches first of all key scenes. At her command are years of background and experience, schools, academies, Colleges in Paris or Brussels or New York or London or anywhere else in the world. A successful design business of her own generally, which brought her to Hollywood's attention in the first place. And a flair and knack which stamps her creations with individuality and force. Other opinions now on the rough sketches. Will these wardrobe items do their best in contributing to the film's effectiveness? Help to give it character and impact. Emphasize this, that, or the other facet of the screen character being created. In short, are they right? On all counts, for the job to be done. If so, they are approved by everyone concerned. This is the official go-ahead. And here another important talent of the costume designer comes to light, a very practical one, which shows itself on the back of these sketches in the form of a complete cost breakdown for each particular gown, frock, ensemble, or whatever the wardrobe item. Only now can the wardrobe department, under the supervision of the costume designer, proceed with its job of producing costuming for one or a dozen, a hundred or a thousand characters to be created within the framework of a single feature-length picture. And only now, the costume designer's art can take tangible form in material, color, drape, and line. Only now does a gown become a gown moving out of its conception as an idea or a sketch. With the film in production, the costume designer continues on stage, keeping a watchful eye on the costumes she has designed, making last minute improvements, making sure that her creations reveal to best advantage the purpose for which they were designed, maintaining a constant surveillance from first scene to last. Only when production ends does her assignment end. Only to begin all over again as new pictures go into production to claim her expert attention to making wardrobe right. And to call up all the costume designer's skillful blend of factual knowledge and artistic creative ability. To contribute in subtle ways and in spectacular ways to your film enjoyment.